Wow, how do you follow that? You know, just another round of applause for Dr. Premack. He has been an amazing leader. <laughs> and thank you to the OMA staff for playing fanfare for the common health care provider. You know, I, I, I say that it's a little tongue in cheek, but the people in this room, the frontline health care workers, who have put their patients' lives ahead of their own through this COVID pandemic. Uh, I just want to, one more round of applause for every healthcare worker that's uh, helped us get through this mess. I can't tell you the privilege and honor it is for me to be moving into this role as president of your society tonight. Uh, you know, I remember coming back to my first meeting 17 years ago it never occurred to me that I would be the guy on the stage giving a speech. But here I am, I've stuck with it because the OMA is making a difference. Not only are we making a difference, the OMA is changing the world. How are we doing this? We're changing the world through empathy, acceptance, and respect. So let me explain. So, like many in this room, I was a member of the OMA. I attended meetings, I learned a ton, I met people. Uh, but I had never given a talk until a decade ago when none other than Dr. Premack called me. Now, mind you, I didn't actually know him uh, until this phone call. And he said, Ethan, we, we'd like you to give a talk at our OMA conference. I said, oh, great, wow. I remember I was so excited. Um, I had a new baby girl at home. I was about as excited about giving a talk as I was about seeing her take her first steps. I said, great, what do you want me to talk about? And Dr. Premack says, we'd like you to talk about weight bias. And I remember as all the blood rushed back out of my head and I felt sick to my stomach thinking, weight bias, what is that? Never really thought about it, never really heard of it. And boy, did that change my life. I started researching and writing a slide deck on this and I learned some of the most important information about obesity. Doctors weren't treating obesity as a disease we were just blaming our patients for it. We didn't offer any evidence-based treatments. We didn't offer lifestyle intervention or medication. The doctor would just tell the patient, lose weight. And if the patient came back a year later and had not lost weight, they were labeled as non-compliant. They weighed patients in waiting rooms in front of others and made comments. Gosh, Betty, what happened? Or worse, Johnny, you know, if you keep getting fatter, you're gonna die. Have you ever had a patient that was told that? Or even worse, sorry Jennifer, but our scale doesn't go up that high. I realized this was no different than telling a patient with depression to think happy thoughts, or telling a person with alcohol addiction to stop drinking alcohol. Why was it not only okay, but in fact it was the standard of care for doctors to not care and not treat obesity? I learned that people with obesity were less likely to get hired, got paid less for the same work, they were even less likely to get into college. And that these practices were legal in all states in the United States except one. Further, insurance companies refused payment for every evidence-based service for obesity. The OMA is changing the world. We successfully advocated at the American Medical Association, actually right across the street at the Hyatt, that obesity is a disease. We successfully advocated that students and residents should get educated in obesity. And we successfully advocated that obesity should be treated respectfully at AMA meetings. And that at AMA meetings, and at, in JAMA, by the way, person first language should be used. Empathy, acceptance, and respect. The ONA teaches empathy. We listen to our patients non judgmentally. We listen to their feelings and help them learn to change their environment, their very lives, so they can be more healthy. Like treating depression without empathy, we cannot treat obesity. The OMA teaches acceptance. It's not a patient's fault when they develop hypertension, diabetes, or breast cancer. It's not their fault when they develop depression. And it's certainly not their fault when they develop obesity. If we can accept that obesity is primarily genetic and biological, and that these forces determine the behavior, then we can treat obesity as a disease instead of blaming the patient for it. And the OMA teaches respect. We treat patients the same regardless of gender, ethnicity, skin color, race, sexual orientation, 
age, weight, height, or body mass index. And in fact, we have a newly formed International and Diversity Committee to ensure this very commitment. By teaching empathy, acceptance, and respect, the OMA is changing the world. 10 years ago, obesity was not a disease. Now it is. 10 years ago, no insurance covered any treatment. Now, many insurances cover many treatments. I see a future with obesity parity, a future where people are treated the same regardless of their BMI. Healthcare providers talk to their patients with empathy, acceptance, and respect, and insurers offer the same coverage for obesity as any other chronic disease. We have work to do, we can't do it alone, and it takes a village to make that happen. First and foremost, everybody in this room, we need our families to support us on this mission. And I'd like to say a special thank you to my wife, Amy, who came all the way out for this meeting, and my beautiful family, three children, who uh, I sometimes spend so much time working on OMA stuff, I worry I'll miss out on their childhood. So thank you to everybody. To our amazing OMA staff, who not only kept us floating through this pandemic, but pivoted easily to virtual conferences, and believe it or not, right now the OMA is stronger than ever with a strong balance sheet, and our membership numbers have swelled to 3,600 members. So maybe another round of applause for our amazing OMA staff. <laughs> Finally, our volunteer board. I've had the pleasure to work with such amazing people, and I know as the future comes along, the future of the OMA is sitting in this room, and I hope that everybody can consider getting more involved. If we're gonna change the world, a lot of work needs to be done. That work is gonna be done by the people in this room. But I would ask you today, don't base your hiring decisions on body mass index in your clinics. Don't blame your patients for the weight problem. Practice empathy, acceptance, and respect, but teach it to your families, your coworkers, your patients and your staff, and when you're ready, step up. Our OMA is only as strong as our members. It took me that one phone call talking about weight bias. If you're not involved, get involved. Join a committee, run for the board. Who knows, 10, from, 10 years from now, you might be the person giving the speech. Thank you for this opportunity. Have a great meeting.